Are you ready? Stand by. Welcome to the Three Gun Show, episode 71. I am your host, Dave Hartman. My guest this week is Fame Match Director of the USPSA Multigun Nationals, Surefire World Multigun Championship, and many others, Pete Renzing. This episode is brought to you by MGM Targets. Have you ever been at a match and thought, wow, I really need to practice on those skinny knockdowns, or that spinner just ate my lunch. I wish I had more opportunities to, to shoot at it. Well, you can get the same quality steel targets that you see in major matches at MGM Targets. My favorite target lately has been the standard shape auto poppers. Those little guys are challenging for pistol, shotgun, or rifle work. And because they automatically reset, you can run more drills and drills with positional work without bothering to break for reset. Step up your practice or outfit your range and use the code DHMGM10 to save on your purchase to save 10% on your purchase. MGM Targets is putting up some great prizes to give away to you over the next few months. April's giveaway is for an MGM Switch View lever. This little guy will help you quickly adjust magnification on your scope, which is important when transitioning from short to long range targets. For details and how to enter, go to 3gunshow.com MGM. In this episode, Pete and I discuss recent, the recently completed Colt USPSA Multigun Nationals, how each match has their own flavor, and how to design a proper stage for a particular match, and why win is more mental than an actual obstacle on a stage. Links to everything we discuss in this episode, including my favorite MGM target, can be found at 3gunshow.com slash episode 71. Or you can just tap the album art on your uh, smartphone and it will take you right there. Now, please join me in welcoming the show, fresh off the range, Pete Renzing. Pete, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. It's uh, it's good to speak to you, man. I'm uh, I'm excited to to chat with you because you just came off of like a really intense two weeks of setting up, running, and tearing down the USPSA Multi Gun Nationals. I gotta ask, like. Are you zonked out? Are you tired? Are you, are you getting uh, caught up on sleep yet? <laughs> yeah, I wish it was two weeks. Um, yeah, we, we we put a lot of extra time into that match this year and um, took a little longer than normal. Uh, we were lucky enough to have the range early and and we built something that, that everybody seemed to enjoy. Um, started tearing it down Monday. I started posting some some pics on the on the social media, the trailers and everything Tuesday and Wednesday and even a couple of pictures at night when we finally got to a restaurant and had a beer and kicked back. Uh, today was actually my first day not going out to a range in, uh, in over three weeks. So, um, yeah, I'm a little zonked out, but, um, <laughs> did it feel weird not being at a range? Woke up and something crazy happened. So we went and did it and here we are. <laughs> did it feel weird not being at the range today? It did a little bit. It did a little bit. I was like, well, well, got to get up and go. no, I don't got to get up and go today. <laughs> I wrapped it up yesterday. I called for the dump to be picked up and everything's gone and time to time to chill. Sweet. Well, uh, Pete, we're going to get into that like in in depth because uh, it's an ex- extremely interesting topic. And it looks like you ran a great match by um, by all the, the reviews and everything that are out there and the people that I've talked to. But uh, I want to you know, take it way back and, uh, and discuss like how you got into practical shooting. So before we get into that, why don't you give the audience an idea of who you are off the range? Uh, off the range. Um, you know, I, I my friends would just say, I, I like to stay super busy. Um, I never really chill. I don't watch too much TV. If I've got time, I've got somewhere to be or something to do. Um, I, I do a lot of other sports, a lot of hobbies, try to, try to keep, keep active. Um, it's kind of actually funny, long story, how we got into practical shooting, which I'll get into, but, uh, me off the range, just trying to have fun, trying to live life day by day. People, you know, people contact me all the time. Hey, what are you guys doing tomorrow? It's like, I don't know what I'm doing in the next hour. (laughs) Um, you know, I've, I've been in the military. I've lived a lot of, done a lot of jobs, done a lot of things where it was like, you know, very structured. And, and now, you know, other than preparing for the Nats and preparing for big matches and things that, that we, that we love to do. Yeah. I just kind of cruise cruise day by day. And, and when cool things happen, you know, I live it. Dude, that is an amazing philosophy. That's really cool. 
It's, I mean, it's, it happened this morning. I got a phone call and a friend of mine, guy was in town and he's like, hey, you know, we're heading out to the lake and 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 we got to hook up with some guys from UFC and and we're going to do this, do that. Why don't you come out and join us? And it was like, all right, I'll be there. In a, I'll be there in an hour. And and I woke up and leaned over and I told my missus, hey, I'm heading out to the lake. She's like, uh, OK, have a good time. <laughs> so, you know, it's just if, if something pops up and, 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 and I let it go. I'm probably going to regret it. So I just try to grab everything and keep going. That's cool. So have, have you always been like that? Were you like that in your youth or is that something you got? You told me you were a, you were a Marine. Uh, oh, in the no, I think, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't remember too far back, uh, but you know, when I was in the Corps, <laughs> I think when I was in the Corps, man, I, I, I had a really weird job in the Marine Corps and I was, I was getting some education and in, in engineering and, and I did, there wasn't a lot of guys in my my occupational specialty. So I had a lot of time to do whatever. And I just started volunteering for everything I could. So, you know, an op would come up or a training class would come up or it was like uh, sit around the office or go do that. And and I, I, I just volunteered for everything. And I had so much fun doing that that I kind of structured once I got out, I kind of structured most of my life around it. I mean, obviously, I've had to have jobs and and, I, and I've worked you know hard for a long time, but. But if I had time and there was something to do, I say do it. So that that's the way I've been for a long time. I like it. That's a that's a great way to live life too. You get so many uh, you know, so many more opportunities when you say yes to opportunities. Like things yeah, just copy, happen to come up. Copy that. Yeah, I, I got I got quite a lot of stories, man. So they come out around the campfire. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, Pete. Uh, so you know the the show is the Three Gun Show. So let's uh, let's make that transition then. So how did you get into practical shooting and uh and what did it look like in uh in the you know in the early days of your shooting career man I, hey, here it goes so um 2010 uh my girl and i went on a three-month rock climbing trip we were i had to have a hand surgery and so it was like you know let's go so we we hit the road we we traveled all over and and in our travels uh i found out you know i'm a marine and i used to shoot and i used to teach teach sniper and dog teach the basic marksmanship courses but Found out she didn't like guns. So we end up in Idaho where her dad lived. Her dad was a, a cowboy action shooter, Idaho State champion. We take her shooting. First time she's ever shot a gun, and she just loves it. So I start to talk to her about the competition side and what her dad's doing and all that good stuff. And 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 we round the corner, and we come back home to Vegas. We find an indoor shooting range, American Shooters. They're running in a, a USPSA match. We go there. We take take the gun I own. We both shared it. We shoot this little indoor match, and it's been it's been downhill since then. So that was uh, that was January 2010. First shot our first match. Um, my better half, Tawny Torres, she actually uh, competes at a pretty high level in three gun. Also, um, has several several you know high high finishes at big matches like Rocky Mountain and 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 top top threes at nationals and Ironmans and all kinds. So so she just came you know full force from I don't like guns to I love competitive shooting. And that just opened up the doors wow. for me. Years and years of, of training and teaching tactics it kind of opened up my eyes. Like, wait a minute, there's a whole generate, there's a whole lot of people out there that probably aren't aren't going to get involved in in, in in something that's super important to me. You know, our constitutional rights. But uh, here's this competitive game. We can kind of teach people to get involved in this. And uh, and and here we are. This is all we do now. Well, that's cool. And then the uh, the competition end of it is kind of a sneaky way of uh, getting them into being into the Second Amendment as well. Kind of a spoonful of sugar with their their <laughs> Second yeah. Amendment rights. Yeah, you show it to them, and then they, they it changes everything. It open. I, I've met so many people that that they now meet Tani and they see what we do, and it just changes their ideas on it. And and that's kind of my big passion on it now. Um, so so we started in 2010. My first multi gun match was August 2010, just a local match, and then two months later. Um, I got a phone call to help build some stuff for the multi-gun nationals. That was the uh, first time I'd ever even heard of it. I, I was thinking, you know, there's no way I should shoot this match. I just started shooting. And and the phone call was kind of like, yeah, we need some guys that understand how to build some things, some engineering. We got to build some props. And, and, and we actually had to darken a shoot house was kind of my first job with USPSA. And, uh, and then I stayed and shot the match and I had a great time. Um, Tanya didn't shoot that year. She, she picked it up the next year. Um, so that, that kind of brought me from not shooting for many years to competitive shooting, to being introduced to the guys at USPSA and the multi-gun nationals. And then fast forward, this is the seventh one that I've helped with or, or run myself. So 
that's that's the long story short. I got a lot more, but that's that's, what, <laughs> that's that's how you get that's how you figure it out. That well, I guess uh, it was great talking to you, Pete. So you have a wonderful oh. evening. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> that's the the end. So they uh, they it sounds like whomever you know recruited you to help build those stages like picked the right guy, right? Like let's get this guy in early and uh, start getting him in the and now they've got their hooks in you and you're still there seven years later. <laughs> Yeah, the the local three gun match director Charlie Brown, um, he's now out in Texas. He actually knew knew Michael Voigt, who was the current president for USPSA, and and called Mike and said, "Hey, you know, I got this guy. He's new, but he's been helping us build stuff, and he could probably help us out." So I got I got super lucky and blessed way early because I immediately met Michael Voigt, and then Mike said, "You know, hey, you know, can you can you help me build some of this stuff?" And next thing you know. I was finding him on the range and you know, what else you got for me? He's like, well, I still need you to get that thing done. I'm like, that stuff's all done. What else you got? So Mike tells the story all the time when we're hanging out. So, um, we did that. And, and the following year, Mike called me and Charlie up said, Hey, I want to have a meeting with the three, three of us. And I want, I want help designing all the stages. So, so that was 2001. I, I was kind of a mix, mix of the designer. And then 2002, I pretty much designed the whole match myself. Uh, or not, sorry, not to 2000, 12. Uh, thir- 2012, then 13 and 14, I was designing the match and then still shooting the match and then 15 and 16, uh, match director and, and ran the whole thing. And with the support and help of, you know, the USPSA guys, the, the, the range masters, Carl Schmidt and, and all the ROs and, and the presidents, you know, Mike Voigt then was, was, was removed. And then Phil Strader came in and Phil called me up, said, Hey, will you keep doing this stuff? And I was like, yeah, I'd love to. And and now Mike Foley, I uh, just met him at the Nationals and he saw what we did and pulled me aside and said, well, uh, yeah, you're you're doing a good job. Thank you. So that's where we are with uh, with me building them. It's probably a lot more information about shooting them, though. <laughs> well, so, OK, so I have, I have a bunch of questions about like, uh, you know, your your uh, early career and everything um, and the transition from like mostly, you know, shooting the Marine Corps and teaching tactics and everything. But I got to know, like. How does, um, how does the interaction with USPSA goes? Because most of those guys are largely pistol shooters, if if in my perception. And correct me if I'm wrong, but then how how do they interact with you on like the multi gun end, being this their their biggest multi gun match of the year? Yeah, no, it's true. Um, there's so many outlaw and 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 other types of multi gun out there, and. And you got all these great matches that I've shot all of them, the Rocky Mountain three guns, the Blue Ridge, the Iron Man's, the 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 superstitions. I've been to all of them. And and they all have different rule books. And and I've talked to people over my career and said, you know, how do we get together and really try to bring this into one location? And and I just don't see it happening. Um and and, and so everybody's kind of gone their own directions. And USPSA actually when I started doing the multi-gun, we barely had over 100 shooters. Um, there's so many multi-gunners that don't shoot pistol. And to shoot the Nationals, you have to be a USPSA member. So you've got to join just so you can shoot this one match. And it wasn't uh, it wasn't designed the way that some of the multi-gunners like the old scoring system where they were still they were still actually scoring targets and things like that and didn't have the time plus. And since I got involved and, and spoke with the presidents and spoke with everybody, we we've, we've managed to make some good changes that have allowed the multi gun nationals to grow to a point where where last year we had about 80 shooters less than we had this year and it was the biggest one in history. So this year was by a lot the biggest one in history and I think yeah. uh, wow. I th- I, th- I think we're we're making good ground and and going in a good direction with that. Again, I still love all the other styles. I still love the Iron Man and I love the speed stuff. I love it all. Um I just multi gun nationals is here in my home and and I've been running it so so I I keep keep ties with that that group and try to find ways to improve it every year. That's that's pretty amazing. <laughs> um, so okay, taking a step back to when you when you first started uh, um, shooting you and uh, uh, Tawny, what was it like that first match for you? Did did you find that you blended in well to like the game part of it, or were you still, you know, using? I mean. I, I mean, I don't even know. Like, is it completely different than what you learned in, in the Marine Corps and what you were teaching? Oh, yeah. No, totally different. Totally different. I had to make some major changes. I mean, the way I hold the gun today is different. Uh, you know, I used to run it when I first started three gunning. I used to flick my safety on and off every time I took a step. And there's all this stuff that that I kind of worked my way through. But But now, no, now I believe now 
the things I can do now, if I could do the things that I do now back then, along with a little bit of, you know, the little bit of the tactics training that we constantly did, man, I'm, I'm so much more of an amazing marksman today than I ever was back then. And back then I shot for the teams and, and I did a lot of cool stuff. So I think what we're doing in competition shooting, you know, it's, it's just faster, it's more accurate, it's more agile. There's so much more going on. And, and then you just kind of twist that into your tactics a little bit. It's pretty easy to bring it back. Um, I, I think, I think back then I didn't have the skill, the, 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 the speed to accurately engage as fast as I can now. So, so I, you constantly second guess yourself, but now I, you know, when I walk on a stage now, I just know like, yep, that's, I can do all that. I've seen all that before. I think it comes with shooting more matches, practicing more, training more, the way I wrap my whole team around our training and practice and, and how we flow it. But yeah, there were some changes that had to be made, but for me, it didn't take that long because I was pretty stoked on the competition thing and with my girl wanting to do it with me and, and, and we do everything together. It was, it was an easy transition. That's way cool. So the, um, the time between shooting that first person, uh, excuse me, pistol match and multi-gun you said was like six months or just a few yep. months, about, about eight months, I think about eight months. Okay. So then did, did you, when you shot that multi-gun match, did you think like, okay, this is my gig or were, were you like, okay, this is cool, but I'm going to still shoot pistol. And then how is it for you now? Is it primarily multi-gun or do you shoot pistol uh, matches as well? No, um, you know what I liked about what I liked about three gun and multi gun is, is is I've actually been working here in town with with UFC fighters for a while and a lot of different sports where there was a lot of different uh, dynamics and different aspects. I love the pistol side. Um, I enjoy shooting pistol. I still shoot pistol. I kind of have a I kind of have a goal like maybe when I when I come out of retirement, I may I may come out shooting some pretty hardcore pistol um, just for a little while because I'm able to recover my knee and my shoulder a little bit there. Um, but three gun for me just seems to be a little bit more difficult all around the pistol game it, it, as a whole at the national level, when you go to a national limited title and there's 400, 500 competitors all shooting the same division and, and the top 16 guys are just amazing. Yeah, that's hard. You think like, what would it take to get that good? You know, a lot of training, a lot of practice some talent that's hard. But the overall physical aspect of just maintaining all three guns, transitioning through the three guns, if one day your pistol's not going well, your rifle may be kind of like, as silly as it sounds, I taught golf for years in Hawaii. And if, you, if, if you're having trouble driving the ball, sometimes your irons were just dead on. And other days you couldn't putt to save your life. And so trying to put it all together was the challenge for me. And that's what I found in three gun. It's trying to put the rifle, the pistol, the shotgun, you know, slugs, long range rifle, you know, fast pistol with good, accurate, small plate shots and mixing it all and putting it all together in one little quack, quick, quick stage. To me, that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of my favorite. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. It's, it's one of the things that drew me to it as well is the, uh, the, like you said, the physical aspect of it and trying to manage the, uh, guns. Plus, um, <laughs> can you imagine like if they had like a sandbag that they wanted, like, uh, you know, a production, shooter to uh carry like okay carry the sandbag over here and then pick up your your gun like he would throw a shit fit right like that would never happen in in a pistol match no you find a way to throw the sandbag so you don't gotta carry it <laughs> yeah exactly or, or, or you tuck it out you throw it over your shoulder or you find some way to get your other hand on the gun because god forbid you shoot a pistol more than with with one hand yeah exactly <laughs> good times no it's fun it's good stuff man i i run pistol matches and three gun matches uh i've got a pretty cool pistol match i started developing that this is our this was our second year and then we have our third year next year. We got a title sponsor and you know all the local guys were like, Man, you run these great three guns. Why don't you give us a big pistol match? And John John McClain was on board helping me out with it and with some ideas and uh it's pretty popular. So I enjoy both games. I, I like playing both games. Cool. Now are do you primarily stick to one range or do you run like monthly matches at multiple ranges in the uh like Vegas area? Oh, man. Okay. You ready to be tired? I am, so, dude. Let's hear it. So for the last five years, um, I ran a match after we got going, and, and I took over at the Desert Sportsman's location, which is where Nationals has been. I ran at Desert Sportsman's a pistol match every first and third Saturday, or sorry, first and third Sunday, um, and then a two-gun and a multi-gun on the f second and fourth Sundays. And then I ran over at the Pro Gun Club, uh, matches every single Saturday. We do a steel match and then two pistol matches and a multi-gun. And then I ran 
Every Monday up at the Clark Range, a steel challenge match, which then downgraded to every other Monday. And and so basically I ran about 12 matches a month locally, plus traveled, plus went to all my matches that I wanted to go to. And, uh, and that was about uh, the last five years up until January this year when I decided to consolidate everything to the Pro Gun Club, my last location. Wow. So, yeah, I was... I, People ask like, man, John, John's getting so good and, and Cody's so good and Tony's getting so good. We, we were shooting a match every single Saturday, every single Sunday. And then John would come meet us up there on Mondays. So if you had the access to the ammo and you wanted to shoot and a major benefit to being on my team is you get to shoot all the matches for free. So you start doing the math on, on three matches a week, 12 matches a month. That's how much practice we get. Man, that is a lot of practice. So, yeah, so nope. we get a lot of training and a lot of practice and it was a lot of, uh, I ruined three cars, uh, driving them and, and toting steel and, and building the matches. And, but I, I don't regret it all. Cause it's made, made me and Tani, who we are as shooters made me as a match director and, and the guys on my team that are, that are, they're a family now, you know, they're out there pushing hard out there on the pro tours and stuff. So it's been awesome. Yeah. You probably created like an amazing community around the, uh, the matches as well. Yeah, that was always the goal. Um, when we first started, there was only like one or two matches a month. So then I'd go down to to Norco in California and go go out to Phoenix, and it was kind of like in Phoenix, man, you could shoot you could shoot every Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday. So it was like, man, we need that in Vegas because I can't afford to drive to Phoenix every week. <laughs> so rather than rather than drive to Phoenix every week, I just I just started volunteering at all the ranges and begging them to let us run more matches, and and here we are. Um, what. What do you think is like the the key to getting those those matches at ranges? Have you found any like you know political pushback from like boards of ranges that you've been at? Oh uh, yeah, well <laughs> that's probably one of the main reasons why I'm consolidating down to one location. Um, yeah, I mean all over the country, there's constant fighting and pushback with the boards. A lot of the ranges that are run under nonprofits and and ranges that are run on volunteer basis. Um, you know, it's really hard to get young guys and, and guys that are, you know, passionate about the sport to be able to afford to not work on weekends and, and during time like that, especially here in Vegas. Everybody works weekends. This isn't a town where you work Monday through Friday. Right. So so nobody it's hard to get people to volunteer and stay on board and help run these matches and do some of that volunteer based stuff. Um, so you're always pushing with the boards. You're always dealing with them. A lot of times they're retired guys, you know, good guys, ex-military I got nothing bad to say about any of them, but they're hanging on to these ranges and and their bench rest rifle shooting. And, you know, they they just they want the ranges to be run a certain way. And then they see us running around with our guns and and we're crazy. I mean, this is my seventh year running the nationals at Sportsman's. And I I pulled into the range and some of the some of the gate guys that are, you know, right. They're like, what are you guys doing? You guys are running around with guns. Yeah. Like, what you got? Are you got you guys are crazy. So they just. They don't understand the sport and the game, and so it becomes this constant push of, you know, you know, should we should we be doing this stuff? Is it safe? And and in the end, uh, you know, I've just I've consolidated to one location. That location is is open for what we're doing. They actually let me survey and lay out the the bays the way that we have them, and I designed those bays to to handle major matches. So I got a good location. It's close to the house. I'm still helping out the other ranges whenever they have questions and new guys that, that that need anything. I'm dropping gear off for them and helping them out. But for me, yeah, I'm I'm kicking back a little bit. I'm gonna I'm gonna find my my climbing life and my my boat life and and some of the other things that I enjoy to do because for the last six years we've done nothing but build this thing. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, so for the for the last six years, has this been your full time gig then? Yeah, I still on the side. Um, I have a training company where I do some some personal training and private training with with some athletes and some of my old clients and some some just some players here in Vegas that you know when they're in town I go take care of them and help them out. Um, and then the real secret is my my better half has a really ridiculously good job, and nice. because she loves she loves shooting and realizes that you know we need to have the matches to be able to practice and train. You know she she stepped up big time and allowed me to do what I needed to do to put this thing all together. That's amazing. So big thanks to, uh, to her for allowing, you know, hundreds of people to enjoy all these matches. 
Yeah, if it wasn't for if it wasn't for, for Tony, there's no way I would have been able to do this. Not not at the grand scheme that we were able to do it. No way. That's awesome, man. And uh, and cool that you recognize that and and give her the uh, credit for it. So. <laughs> <laughs> So the uh, okay, so the the multi gun nationals. This was um, as we're recording this. It was what two weeks ago? Is that right? Two, yep, yep, yep. Two weeks um, ago. Actually, last weekend we were. Shooting. Oh, last weekend. Okay, okay. So it was la- one week ago. So give give me an idea. You know, I, I want like the audience to know like what level of of planning and execution goes into creating a match of this caliber. So. Give me an idea of like approximately when you started planning the stages for multi gun nationals, the 2016 multi gun nationals. Colt 2016 multi gun nationals was a vision at the close of the 2015 multi gun nationals. Nice. So as soon as the stages are being shot and I'm watching the shooters shoot them and I'm deciding what I like and don't like about the stages, because I knew the match was going to be on the same ground and I and I've really learned that range inside and out. Um, I'm able to start looking and go, okay, what about this? And I can do this and I can change that and I can move that. So I start kind of designing it like a year out. Um, and then I have a, I have a problem and I lose sleep trying to, trying to make things happen and figure out which way I can do this or which way I can do that. And then over the course of, uh, probably the last like solid three, four months, I really start to finalize the stages. Um, I'll often in a local match, I'll, I'll, I'll put a target at a certain place where I think I may want it and try to see how that works or, or a flyer in the direction that I may want it to see how that works and things like that. But inevitably it just comes down to me sitting down and, and, and really getting creative and trying to figure out what I, what I would want to shoot a, a style that I think is, I think is a competitive shooting style, completely fair for everybody of any, any ability level different than you would, let's say an Ironman, you know, or a, or a hard as hell match. You know, I, I helped design that match the first two years. When you, when you think about that match, you're, you're, you're really trying to think of some pretty hard stuff and some challenges. I take the multi gun nationals and I think, okay, if I've got D shooters and C shooters and B shooters all the way up to the world's greatest multi gunners coming out here to shoot this game, I want it to be pretty much anybody can do it. So I, I take away for this style, I take away, you know, a lot of up downs, a lot of sprints for no reason, a lot of a lot of carrying anything, any kind of weird start positions. It's pretty much here's the X's. You're going to start there. There's something to shoot right away. You're going to be shooting the entire time through the stage. And if you can move and shoot, cool. And if you want to move, stop, shoot, then move, stop, shoot. You can accomplish the mission also. Just may take a little more time. So. so. That that definitely sounds like a a specific style of match. So when you're designing that, are you cognizant that like this is a a USP? This is under the title or under the heading of USPSA, and my customers are expecting a USPSA style match, like in air quotes. Can't see me doing yes, that, but one hundred percent, one hundred percent. When 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 Travis Gibson with MGM Tars calls me up and says, "Hey man, can you can you help me out with a couple stages for Iron Man?" I'm designing an Iron Man stage. And because I've borrowed that match and shot that match, I, I, I know what that stage is supposed to be like. And, and I think that's probably what, what gives me a little, I'm not saying, uh, I don't want to say an advantage over other match directors or stage builders is I'm also, I also carry two Grandmaster cards and I shoot three gun at a pretty high level and I've shot every division of three gun out there. So I've shot limited, I've shot heavy, I've shot open. I, I kind of look at the, the the match and I look at the client base that's coming and the customers that are coming. And if I could create a style that that they could come to and feel like, hey, man, that was cool. That was different than what we did last week or different than what we're going to do next month. You know, to me, that's a that's a cool product. And if people enjoy the product, they're going to come back. Wow. You know, I didn't know that um, you had two GM cards and shot every division. That does seem like a serious advantage in, in designing stages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um I started, of course, shooting tack and and shooting production at first, and then shot some limited and and in pistol. I've never shot open pistol, um, but just last year for fun, I was going to a match and I hadn't done much training or practice, and the whole team was going. So it was like, all right, Cody's going to shoot limited, and Jeremy's going to shoot heavy, so I'm not shooting heavy, and John's going to shoot tack. So heck, I'm gonna try to shoot open. So I, I called up Mike Void. I'm like, hey, I need some dots. I need you to drill some holes in my shotgun. 
and and I and I, I went and shot open. And my my biggest competitor that at that match was Craig Outson. And I love that guy. And and I showed up with the open gear, and he just started laughing. He's like, "Oh, this is gonna be fun." And, <laughs> and we we man, they made fun of me so bad. It was a good time though, and, and that's kind of like. You know, heck, I I can go out there and just have a good time with it. I know the competitive field, as far as the biggest field, not who the best is, but the largest field is the TAC field. Um, but when the team's going somewhere and John's shooting TAC, well, no sense me and John shooting against each other. We can we can spread the love and and shoot different divisions. Yeah, it's pretty cool. You know, the the AMU does that, and uh, it seems like a lot of a lot of I guess bigger teams are kind of catching on to that as well. You've got like Cobalt Kinetics with you know Keith Garcia and. Nick Atkinson, Rick Birdsall, and Kalani Laker are all shooting different, and then Team Benelli's doing the same thing now. So, it's yeah, it was of, awesome. Uh, I, I had uh, AMU shooting with Team Iscope at the Nationals, and right in front of them, directly one squad in front was Cobalt Team, and uh, yeah, everybody did good. My team all got got plaques. The Cobalt Team all got plaques. The AMU Team, of course, they're all they're all up there all the time. I love those guys. Yeah, it's it, that, that sounds like the. Uh, you know the the two squads to uh to watch right there and it's cool you put them right next to each other yeah on the flip and on the flip schedule i had the travis gibson craig outson craziness going on there with all those guys <laughs> and then right next to them was jerry mitchlick and their group so on the final day the way the schedule wrote which people may not realize but i wrote the schedule so that on the final day all six of the super squads were stuck down on stages one through four together and 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 they were on an on off format for that one little morning versus the rest of the schedule they shoot four or five and then go home well that sunday morning they were all squished down into stages 1 through 4 together and so they were able to watch each other and chat with each other and we were able to get some interviews and there was cameras and it was fun cuz cuz i don't think they they probably realized that was going to happen but that morning that Sunday morning when they all got down there to stages one, two, and three, and they saw like the other schedule guys, the afternoon morning guys that shot AM, PM, and then the guys that shot PM, AM, and all of a sudden we're all here together. It was all the yellow jerseys and the blue jerseys and the red jerseys, and it was cool. Dude, that's that's pretty cool. So, did you so you planned it that way? Was it like intentional? Did you have like a um, you know a TV crew that was coming and you did it that way for that, or did you yeah, just think no, like I want to see this? Um, we had we had a couple guys flying drones. Um, it got super windy. Uh, that's a whole nother story. We it got crazy, crazy windy. So oh yeah, we'll get all to the that. Drones got grounded. Um, the one guy that was flying, he's such a nice guy. He flies for me all the time. He crashed it into himself trying to not let it hit anybody. <laughs> Ended up hitting his shirt and cutting his shirt, and then land on his leg and cutting his leg. And so I had to make him launch from like the desert. I moved him like out of the stages. Like you got to go out there and launch from there. Um, but yeah, no, I planned it that way. Um, you know, my passion is I want to see this thing grow and, and, and outside sponsorship. And I mean, we got all these, all these posts constantly going on about sponsorship and prize tables and, 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 and how these matches are being run. And, you know, five years ago, there was like 10, the big right. 10, that's what they right. called it. And now, now it seems like you can't build a match on a weekend without it being on a weekend with some other match somewhere in the country. There's, there's, there's a hundred of them. Oh yeah. I'm standing next to my, uh, my giant dry erase calendar for 2016 that I have. And I threw all the matches on there and it's amazing how, how many of them are sitting on top of each other. And it's, some of them are like really hard choices on the weekends. Yeah. There's, there's just so many now. So, you know, my thought was, Hey, we get, I, I, I was blessed. I had a huge field come out to the nationals the biggest one in history, some some people that are traveling and flying, which is very rare in today today's day. There's not a lot of people flying because there's enough matches you can drive to. So, you know, those of us who have done Three Gun Nation and, and flown to Tulsa or fly to Virginia or flown all over and flown with your gears six, seven times a year, it, it gets exhausting and it gets expensive. Um, so having all having the field I had coming and then knowing that they were all coming and thinking, man, if we can get all these guys in the same general area on the same day, that's a lot of good photos. That's a lot of good interaction. You know, most of us, we see these guys two, three times a year and, and, and they're legitimate friends. You know, I have people that don't live in this state that I know if I call them up, they'll be there for me. So get, get all those guys in that one little neck of the woods at my match and get them all rapping and chatting and seeing each other and we'll, fueling off each other it was it was cool to see yeah for sure and and it's interesting that you bring up the uh you know the 
the really good friendships that are created over just a few matches a year. I've noticed that as well. And it's, it's very, very interesting to watch that happen. And, uh, and it's cool that, you know, you can make friends in such a short amount of time over just, uh, you know, a few stages over a couple of days. Yeah. I mean, like, like interests and like personalities, you know, there's, if you're going to, if you're going to climb to the top of this sport or any sport, you know, you've got, you've got certain personality traits that, that are going to, bring you together with other people with the same personality traits. And in some of our states and some of our cities here in Vegas, there's, there's just not a lot here in Vegas. It's one of the few places I've lived where there's just, there's not a large amount of, of out outdoors, outgoing, crazy, crazy people like that. So, so yeah, I've met more in the three gun world than probably I've met living in Vegas for 10 years. Yeah. Do you, now that's interesting. Do you think that it's because Vegas is like a, a travel destination and not maybe not necessarily like a plant your roots type place. You know, it's real transient. People come here for a couple of years, you know, thinking it's going to be great. And then they bail. (laughs) It's, uh, you know, the same way when I lived up in the mountains in Colorado, you know, people come for two, three years, they snow bunny, you know, they want to want to be a ski bum. And then they realize, man, this is expensive and and I need to go get a real job. And and they, and they bolt. So um, I found that here in Vegas. I haven't really, uh, there's nobody that lives here right now that lived here when I lived here when I moved here 10 years ago and and I moved here I moved here just because of a job you know opportunity and and one thing led to another and 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 I met Tani here and 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 we have all the matches here and I, I run the big ones here I run I run the nationals here and I also run my big surefire world match here so so I'm anchored down here pretty good for a while um I, I guess all the ranges would have to close down and and then I'd be making some phone calls around the country and be like, "Hey, I got a couple cool matches." So uh, <laughs> you you got a range, you got a location for me to put these things on. So I'm glad you brought up the uh, the surefire match um, because you know I was I was asking you about like your um, the the feel of the USPSA Multi Gun Nationals. Now, how how do you in your head make the surefire match and the USPSA Multi Gun Nationals different enough? to where it wants that you can draw the same people to two different matches the the surefire match is it's so easy man um (laughs) that was that was michael voigt and and barry duke over at surefire and they 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 pulled me aside after helping them out for a couple years and going out there and they're like you know we have this idea for this for the for a match that's bigger and better and and i said i got an idea too so basically what the surefire match is all about for me is you got Iron Man. You got you got Three Gun Nation doing their 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 base speed stuff. You got you got Superstition Mountain has their own kind of style. You've got the Rocky Mountains and the Blue Ridge terrain matches, and you got the Nationals, and they're all very different styles. And my thought was, hey, who better to crown you know the the one of the biggest champions once we grow this match than to make somebody perform on all with all three guns on every stage but also be able to perform in all the different styles of three gun that have been created around the country. So the surefire match is basically it's two terrain type stages where there's no, not too many walls. You just kind of, you got to move across some terrain. The terrains maybe not as beautiful as Rocky mountain or blue Ridge, but, but it's some Rocky desert terrain. And then there's a couple stages where you kind of run here, shoot this gun, put it down, run here, shoot this gun, put it down, run here, shoot this gun and you're done. Then there's like four stages in, in kind of my new style that I'm working on where it's it's just fast. It's tight. There's not a lot of shotgun loading, maybe four, four to six at the max. Uh, all your rifle shots are inside the bay, so 50 yards or less, and, and it's just fast. You know, guys, these these top guys at, at, at the Nationals, they were shooting some of those three-gun fast stages that I built. They're doing them 50-round stages with all three guns. They're busting them out in 30 seconds. So I mean, it's just fast. And then you've got the national style, which with the nationals, man, we just, we hide everything. We, we take away all the one eighties. There's absolutely not a single target you can see behind you. There's tons of walls. You know, I put 200 and something walls up in 12 stages for the nationals. That's a lot of equipment. It's <laughs> a lot of you walls. Know, Holy cow. Yeah. There's uh, 40 something double stack barrels, 200 and something walls. It's just hide everything and, and, and flow through the stage. Um, so the surefire match is, is two, two stages of everything and then two night stages. So it's a, it's, it's just a mix of everything that's out there in the country, at least maybe not exactly what other match directors would say their match is, but I've shot those matches and I love those matches and I got nothing bad to say about them. So I grabbed a little bit of their style and said, Hey, 
you're going to come here and one day you're going to shoot these two styles. And the very next day when you come back, you're going to be shooting a whole different style, including two Ironman stages. So we have these two giant, you know, stages that take a minute and a half, two minutes instead of 30 seconds. So that's the surefire match, man. It's the surefire world match is just let's take every style that's out there. If we can bring it to one proving ground, bring everybody together, make them shoot all the styles. Even if there's one style they don't really like, make them shoot all the styles, including two night stages. And there you go. That sounds amazing. That sounds like a ton of fun, man. Like, like what a cool co- concept for a uh, a match, bringing everything together. That's that's really cool. You know, it's it's three gun, right? You got to grab all three of your guns, and you got to be able to do all the styles. And and rather than fighting and arguing and trying to figure out a way to bring all the three gun into one style, let's keep the styles, but let's bring all the styles to one proving ground and, and see who can put it down. And all the guys, all the all the top top shooters that came my first year. Man, the the buzz was incredible. They were just like, "Wow, this is this is some of the most fun we've ever had at a, at a match." Yesterday, we felt like we were at one location in the country, and today we're at a totally different location. Like it's a whole nother match. That is way cool, man. So when when is the Surefire match? Uh, this year it's mid October. Um, the the let's see, Three Gun Nation. I gotta look it up, man. Like you got your dry erase board, yeah. <laughs> It's we keep moving it around a little bit, trying to find just the best weekend for everybody. Last year it fell on Halloween, so that didn't work out too good. This year, okay, so this year the main match is October twenty first, twenty second, and twenty third. Yeah, and gotcha. and I keep that main match pretty small because of the way the the schedule flows and having Ironman stages and then having speed stages is pretty hard. I haven't figured out a great matrix for it. Um, I think this year we've got the number at only like 160 shooters for the main match to be able to fit. And we may make a slight adjustment to that. So we do two other matches mixed in there. So the week before, all the way out on the 15th and 16th, we run a little small match. We call it the mini match or or the early match. And it's basically only like seven of the stages and the two night stages. And I developed that because so many people in my first year were like, man, I really want to come. But man, 16 stages in three days. I just, I, I can't afford that. And, and that's a lot of ammo. So I built the early match for a lot of my locals and a lot of the guys that were like too intimidated to shoot the big match. So we do that and the range is cool. They let me build this thing like two weeks out. So we've got the early match on the 15th, 16th. Then the staff shoot is 18, 19, 20 this year. And the staff shoot, they shoot the whole match, but they just, they just push through. And then the main match, 21, 22, 23 this year, that's when everybody will come and they're scheduled to shoot certain certain styles each day and 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 rotate around together and 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 knock it all out, man. It's 15 stages plus a plus a final shoot off stage that counts as match score. Man, that's so cool. So when you choose the uh oh oh so the the shoot off, by the way, the videos from that was amazing. So I want to talk about that in a minute, but um the uh the date of the match do you have to choose that based on like phases of the moon so it's dark outside and you actually can shoot a night match in the dark we did we did that the first year we, we were like okay we got to nice. do this daylight savings thing and we tried to figure that out and that didn't work that was our first year and then last year <laughs> last year we made another change to it and and it was like okay we'll have the the light but then it'll be dark at a certain time and and that got us hosed on the shoot off it came all the way down to the top two guys in tack we had nils jonasson and keith garcia and they were the last two guys to go. And, and and they were close in this match. You know, 16 stages and they're still rubbing elbows. And the final stage is worth points in the match. So it's not just a side stage for some extra cash or an extra prize. I gave away extra prizes. Oakley dropped off some, some tombstones. And Surefire gave us extra lights for the final stage for, for extra prizes. But ultimately it was, it was, no, this is part of your match, guys. Like, so it was almost dark. And, and and we all we were all like taking our our glasses off, putting on clears, and we're like, man, I'm I'm in my head as a match director. I'm going, oh, Nils and Keith guys shoot in the dark, man. This is terrible. <laughs> so so we brought it up another week so that we don't have to deal with that anymore. It makes the night shoot, you know, just a little bit longer. But I try to schedule it so that people come late in the day, shoot a couple day stages, have a little break, and then shoot their night stages. So it's not like they're on the range all day long. Gotcha. Man, that sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, the shoot-off thing, man, I, I I, I, get on the mic, and the shoot-off thing is crazy fun. And Oh, had, yeah, uh, and like know, everyone's like crowded around. Shot and, the, and then the open people shot, and then 
The whole match last year came down to the last, the, the open race came down to the last two guys shooting the shoot off. And, it, and, and they were already so close that anything could have happened. And the first and second place switched places on that shoot off. Wow. So, so now, now, now for the first time, which is a big, big deal for me, you know, typically you go to one of our matches and you go, you know, Hey, who's in the lead? Well, you have no idea because you know, that guy's over there and that guy's on another schedule and you know, that guy may win, but we don't know until Sunday when somebody sits down and figures out all the scores. Thank God for practice score. You push a button, but you don't know. So, so here was a case where I, I force all the top open shooters to shoot in like squads. They're shooting at the same stages in a, in a, in a circular format on the same day in the same time frame. So if it's windy, they're all getting wind. If it's rainy, they're all getting way, rain. It's not like, you know, half of you shoot, shoot in the rain one day and then the other half get this perfectly sunny day on the long range. I take that out in the match, which is one reason why some people don't like the match because they want to shoot with their buddies, which is why we're coming up with an option for that this year. But the top three open squads, I get to watch them shoot three stages and then I get to hit a button on practice score and I know exactly where the race is. I know who's in the lead and how many seconds behind the next guy is. So I post that on social media and I get that stuff out there. And then it came down to the last stage and we're sitting there going, okay, guys, you don't know who won the match and you're going to get to see it happen and see it unfold right before you. And it did. It changed. The, the very final stage changed between Travis Gibson and Wyatt Gibson, father and son. It was, it was incredible. Boy, but that was a long ride home. <laughs> it was, <laughs> it was super fun to watch. I tell you what, Oh, I bet. I those guys. it was kind of like, oh man, did that really just happen? But it was fun to watch. Yeah, the uh, the video from from that, you know, they're you know everyone puts their match uh, their match videos on Facebook and everything, and uh, the standouts were from the the shoot off. It looked like you know such a great time, and then you know like I was saying, a bunch of people crowded around and watching it and everything. So yeah, quite the quite the event. That's a that's a whole other project that that I'm working on that John McLean actually is helping me a lot with, and some other guys. Um, that, that's going to get released here real soon. But we took so much video, GoPro video, drone video of the Surefire match, and we're, we're working on compiling all that video, and we're going to blow it out there. And basically, the, the Surefire match from last year will have its own place where you can go and see stage-by-stage -stage breakdowns and video of every single stage and the final shoot-off. Um, and then we did it again for the Nationals. We got a little bit hosed with the weather and the wind, so we don't have as much footage as we want. But our goal is this year surefire to have just so much footage and, and so much good stuff so that people can go in there and, and see the stages, see them, see them as they were ran by certain pros, see how they negotiated sections. You know, I know you and I, we go to a match and we shoot a stage and we're like, man, I don't know, that could have been better. And then we see someone else do it. And we're like, Oh, that's how you could, that's <laughs> yeah. how it could have been better. That happens so to me way more than I would like to admit. <laughs> that's something John and I are working on real hard with a, a, a lot of video. It's hard for me to find the time as match director and stage designer to, to get the cameras out and get the drones up. But you'll, 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 you'll start seeing it. The top guys are used to seeing me. Now I walk on the stage at nationals with, with four GoPros strapped to poles and, and little wires. And I walk down range and I turn them all on and then they run the stage and I walk down range and I take them all away and I go to another stage. Nice. So it's fun. It's, it's fun for me, but you know, I'm trying to get more information out there for the sponsors, more, more stuff out there for the shooters to see more stuff about my matches so people can see, you know, how much work we put into them and, you know, 200 something walls in 12 stages and all the barrels and everything that we did for that match. There's, there's not too much, not too many other places you can go in the country where they're putting, putting that much equipment on a stage. So I just want people to see what we're doing and, you know, maybe try to come out and have some fun. Yeah, that's way cool. And, you know, and a lot of the, uh, a lot of the talks that people have had on, on the podcast here, when they talk about like match recon, they're like, go to YouTube, go to Facebook, do searches for this match or that match or whatever. And then you can get a feel of what type of match that is. And if you want to shoot it, and then if you've already committed to shooting it, you can start to look at that match and see like, okay, so these are some of the things, this is kind of the feel of that match. And this is how I would practice for it. So it's cool to get that kind of stuff out there. And, and uh, and get it in in the hands of the people that that actually are interested in that, and then you know you're going to get like a a new person to see that sort of thing and and get hooked on it. That's how I learned about three gun was from YouTube. Yeah, and definitely I had, man, I had a lot of shooters come to this nationals, and 
man, I've been training, I've been practicing, and I watch your stages and I'm I have not been practicing the right stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like like this is so different than what we get locally. You know, some some, you know, it's really hard to build that big of a stage for a local match. And so when you start to break down your training and your practice and your drive, your dry practice and 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 then you go to your local match. You know, if you if you shoot major matches, I, I call my local matches my practice. So I I train with my team. We we come up with drills and we train, and we drive fire. And then we we go to a local match and we try to practice what we've been training. And then you hope that when you go to that that next big match, you're prepared for that. And with all the different styles out there, you know you you could be home shooting your local match and having a great time. And then you show up to the nationals. You go whoa. Like this isn't even. I had so many people. Like this isn't even close to what I've been preparing for. I had, I forgot targets, and I had, I had too many misses, and I had so many penalties. And that's. I'm not trying to penalize shooters by no means, but 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 for this match, I brought the stages tighter. I brought everything in closer. I brought all the targets in closer to really let people open up and and express themselves, go as fast as they possibly wanted to. And in the process, I might have thrown a couple of. No shoots and some hardcover out there that could get you hung up a little bit. <laughs> you know, it's a it's a good point what you say as far as like you know your practice and your local matches. Um, you know, last so um, I'm in Colorado and um, so I you know shoot local matches around here and um, from different uh, match directors. Uh, this year I traveled to Raton for uh, Rocky Mountain Three Gun and then uh, Oklahoma for um, Three Gun Nation Nationals, right? And right uh, it was to to, you know, to get interviews for the podcast and to uh, watch them. And so I didn't shoot them, but just walking the stages and watching people shoot, you could, they were totally different matches. And being from Colorado, like I've never seen a three gun nation match before. Like I, I had under, I understand like what, you know, Rocky mountain three gun was like natural terrains type stuff. And then there's, you know, some, some opportunities for that in some places in, in Colorado, but the three gun nation matches, you know, completely different than everything I had seen. So, you know, that's a different match than, than yours, but it's just one small example of like how different things are, you know, regionally, locally, and, uh, and how do you practice for that? You know? Yeah. And, and when I was out there two years ago on three gun nation, man, I just love the style. I love the stages and Charles does such a good job designing stuff. And he, he ran the first West coast regionals here at my pro gun club. And I helped him out with that. And, it's it's exactly what you said. Everywhere you go, different people do different things. And, and you really, if you could go online and go to, you know, everybody's YouTube channels or go wherever and say, okay, here's my next endeavor. This is my next plan. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm financing this. I'm putting, I've got a match fee involved and travel involved and I got to take time off work. And, you know, we all, we, we all have job. We all have things we got to do. I want to be the most prepared possible when I get there without seeing or knowing what you're getting into that's pretty impossible. And you'd have to, you almost have to go to the range and practice yourself. You know, lucky me, I'm a, I'm a match director, so I get to build my own (laughs) matches. So maybe, maybe when we're getting ready for Ironman, the team gets some stages that might be a little bit closer to the Ironman style. And, you know, maybe when we're getting ready for nationals, I tighten everything up a little bit, but if you don't have the ability to train and practice what you're, what you're getting into, uh, it's going to be a rude awakening when you get there and, and, and think that you can perform at the level you want to perform at. That, you know, that's a really good point, Pete. So let's, let's say that, you know, someone's listening to this and they've, they've liked what you said so far about the, uh, the USPSA multi-gun nationals and they want, they're like, okay, well, I'm going in, in 17. This sounds like a lot of fun, especially when you're, you've got your match video out there. How does an individual then set up a, like a practice regimen for your 2017 multi-gun nationals? Um, well, we're going to, we're going to keep the style just the way it is. So we're going to get some videos out there of it. And I know there's other videos, but, um, we're going to, we're going to keep this style. I really like it a lot. Um, so basically you got to have, you know, a lot of vision, a lot of vision barriers and dynamics, a lot of transitions, you know, you're, you're definitely not going to pick up a gun, stand there and be able to see all the targets and just shoot them all. That's that's never going to happen here. In fact, my range master, when he walks my stages, he goes, he'll he'll find some little sweet spot on the stage where it's probably not even in in play. You know, it might be some place where you really you shouldn't even pick that gun up and move over to that position. But if you did, you could see a whole bunch of shots. So so then we add more vision barriers. It's pretty simple. Like, oh, from right here, I can take eight rifle targets. Well, 
all right, cool. I'll fix that. Be back in, <laughs> be back in an hour. Um, so awesome. If, if, if you're ever going to, if you think you're going to grab a gun and be able to stand in one spot and shoot all the targets and then run somewhere and get rid of that gun and grab another one, not going to happen, not going to happen at the net. So what we're going to do is we're going to require you to be able to pick up a gun and immediately shoot it. Okay. We're not going to very rarely will you grab your shotgun and start loading it. You're going to grab it and shoot it. You're going to draw your pistol. You're going to shoot it. And and the most you're going to do is a step. There's never going to be a sprint to no, for no reason. There was one stage this year at Nationals, uh, stage five. And just by the dynamics of how the rifle portion went at the front of the stage, there was about a seven to eight yard movement from the last pistol paper till you could get to the pistol dump and see the pistol, pistol knockdowns. You could kind of shoot them on the way in, but that was a super advanced move. So a lot of people just sprinted that six, seven yards. That was the biggest sprint in the whole match. So you're probably going to be picking up guns, moving with your guns, probably shooting some on the move, and then just really understanding target presentation. You know, where where where's your rifle shoot when there's a no shoot at three yards, seven yards, 20 yards? Where's your rifle shoot? You know, shotgun patterns. Where's your, how, how big's your pattern? So many people are missing shotgun targets at my master. I don't understand how I'm missing with shotgun. Well, none of those targets are far enough to actually use your shotgun yet. It's it's a rifle shot. <laughs> so, you know, if I stick a clay target at four yards, you, you still don't have a shotgun pattern. That's how you missed it. It's got a slug coming out, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I do deceptive stuff like that. And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to trick shooters by no means, but I want you to understand. No, it's a test each of the gun. skills. Yeah, I want you to understand each gun. I want you to understand, you know, keep your distance with your shotgun, close your distance with your other guns. Uh, you know, understand your offsets on your on your rifle and and man, rolling your scope and using switch view levers and and diagonal sights. Understand how to get through that stuff because because you're probably going to do it. You're going to have some close paper with some 50 yard plates. Um, and and then and and ultimately, if you're new to the game, you can come to the nationals and take two steps, shoot three paper. Take two steps, shoot three paper. Take four steps, shoot two paper. Get rid of that gun. So it's not going to cripple you. Anybody can play the national game. You take a brand new shooter and take them out to Iron Man, and you know it might be Timeout City, or take them out to Rocky Mountain, and they're going to be gassed for, at the elevation and trying to run up and down hills. I love those styles because I'm a pretty physical guy myself. So so I perform well under those situations. I don't I don't I don't begrudge the the sprint for no reason at all. I say the sprint for no reason, but I, I love it. You give me a dummy to carry every year at Iron Man. I grab that dummy and I sprint with that dummy, and and everybody goes, "Oh man, there goes that knucklehead Pete screaming with the dummy again." <laughs> you know, I, I I get first or second on the dummy stage every year I've shot Iron Man because I'll grab that dummy and and go. And you know, maybe maybe there's other guys that shoot better than me at that point, but not a lot of people probably as knucklehead as as I am when it comes to running for no reason or grabbing a grabbing an object and moving it. Now, do you have like a full size dummy at home you practice running with to get ready? <laughs> I, I I do actually. I do. We no have way. punching bags and kick bags and stuff. So maybe uh maybe the year I took Tawny to her first Iron Man, I might have thrown the dummy on her shoulder and made her run around with it and then try to shoot. That might have happened. Nice. That's so cool, man. The uh the specific practice. I love how you do that. That that's really cool. Yeah, you got to, man. Yeah. You gotta you gotta train what you're going to practice and then you got to practice what you've been training. And then you hope when the buzzer goes off and you're not thinking that you'll react to it, you know, and that's, that's really the key to, to all competition. It's just an extension of, of, of us and the shooting game, but all the other, anything else you've ever done in your life, you can't be thinking about it. You can't be race car drivers aren't thinking about driving and golfers aren't thinking about swinging the golf club. Um, we can't be thinking about shooting our guns. We got to just execute a plan that we put in our head and, Hopefully our training and practice have, have done their job. And if you don't think, everything's faster. When you start to think, often things go bad. Dude, that's a that's a really good uh, really good piece of advice there. So one of the things that can throw like a monkey wrench into a lot of people's game is wind when they're shooting long range rifle. Or Sounds like for anything, actually, based on the win that was at the, the multi-gun nationals this year. Get, oh, yeah. You know, for, had, for people that have clays through our clays in weird directions. Okay. Long range rifles tougher. Just standing and shooting offhand plate racks. You know, if you don't have a super wide stance, there's there's a lot of people. If you watch watch out there, you can see people that are 
really low, wide stance, athletic all the time, and other people that stand up fairly tall. And there's all kinds of different arguments and, and reasons why. And 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 I'm blessed to have awesome trainers around me. And one of the new guys on my team actually has a master's degree in exercise phys. And um, his name is Jeremy Reed. He just took third and heavy at the Nationals. And him and I have broken down the, the game quite a bit and and argued all the, the, the ins and outs. But wind, man, wind will change so much. And at the Nationals this year, I got to tell you, the wind, 100%, 90%, the wind was mental. It destroyed people's mental game. They were so freaking out and stressed out over the wind. And and you, it, 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 I don't know if I can say sucks, but it stinks. It, it, it's, the, wind's, the wind's terrible. The wind wrecked our lake day today. It wrecks, it wrecks the shooting matches. It's, it blows targets over. It makes clays go weird directions. You have to use more windage when you're shooting long range. So everybody is having to deal with the wind. You got to embrace the suck. You, 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 as simple as it is and perfect story. So John McClain and Cody Leeper are two of my guys on my team and they were on the long range stage and I walked up there and, you know, match director, I just kind of cruise up, say hi. And Cody looks at me and there was, there was a 20 to 30 mile an hour wind coming out of the North Northwest. And the way that that rifle base sets up, it was blowing pretty much downwind until the very, very end. And then there was a swirl in the back. And Cody, Cody was shooting limited, and he said to me, "There's no wind." He just looked at me and said, "There's no wind. I'm not using. I'm not calling wind, and there is no wind." I was like, "I like that plan. Go lay down and do your thing." And Cody shot that stage amazing. Nice. And John, John came off that stage, and he's like, "Dang it!" I'm like, "What?" He goes, "I let the wind get in my head." He's like, "Cody told me there was no wind. He hit all the targets. Why hit all the targets? Tony hit all the targets, and I just kept making adjustments and." and and questioning myself and if i would have just laid down there and turned the wind off i probably would have done better so the wind will wreak havoc on on your gear it's going to put dust in your equipment it's going to make the stages harder to shoot but everybody's dealing with the wind so embrace the suck try to tune it out mentally and and, and just keep pushing forward man we had 12 we had 12 stages with 200 something walls and not a single stage fell down not a single stage got too far behind schedule and we finished we finished both the windy days on schedule with the match. So that was cool. What well, when you talk about like the the mental game, one of the the videos I saw and I can't remember whose it was, but it was on Instagram, so it was a short one and uh like a gust came up and just blew everything off this table. That was, you know, the <laughs> shooting bags, pistol rugs, you know, everything that was on there was just was just uh, moving around and shit blowing off everywhere. And yeah, that right there gets in your head. Cause you're like, okay, well now I've got to like protect my, my guns. I've got to, you know, and, and plan for that. But it, it's cool to see, you know, Cody's perspective of like, there's no win. I'm just going to do my thing. Yeah. I know that kid. I, I started helping that kid out Iron Man like four years ago. And, and uh, last year at Iron Man, he actually went back to back. He won limited, then won tactical. So he's coming off of uh, two year last year nationals. Um, he took third, and and Joel Turner with the AMU is one of his biggest competitors, and and him and Joel were going to be battling out again this year. And his mental game, I went down to I went down to Idaho. He's going to Boise State right now. I went down there and did some physical training. Took him to the gym. Was helping him out, and uh, he doesn't have that much time to to practice or shoot, and he definitely doesn't have the the finances to keep up with his ammo ammo stuff. And we try to help him out the best we can. But he came here with a pretty good mental game. Started the very first stage in really bad wind and just said, it's windy for everybody. Just got to do it. And knocked it out of the park from the first stage on. He just started a lead and and kind of let it let it, let it it go the whole way. And that's how you got to be, man. It's a mental game. You know, think of how much time you're on the range at a match. Think of how long you're there. And then think of how long you shot the stage. And then during the time of shooting the stage, how many times did you actually pull the trigger? You know, and except for some movement, which is you and I have been walking since we were two. So you know how to walk and you've been chased by a dog or something at some point in your life. I usually say dogs, bullets and cops, you know, run like you've been run like you're being chased. So you've all we've all we've all done that. So think about the actual aspect of how much time you actually are pulling the trigger and and completing the fundamental fundamentals of marksmanship in a day on the range and then tie that back into how much mental mental the game is. So it's, I, I love the mental aspect of it. And I've, I've got like a 
super selfish question for you, but hopefully someone out there there can uh, can relate and and uh, and learn from it too. Um, a couple weeks ago, I was shooting a local match. We got to a stage that um, the the uh, squad in front of us was um, proceeding slowly. They had like five or six shooters left. So then you've got like a 40 minute break and you're completely out of it. And for me, like when I get bored, I start, you know, screwing around and stuff like that. And, you know, now you're out of the game and then you hear the like, all right, they're done. Let's go. How do you, <laughs> how do you, I mean, how do you manage that when you've got like a, uh, you're, you're, you're on your game for four stages straight and then you've got a 40 minute break and get and try to get your head back in that. Do you have like any sort of like tips for, for success as far as that goes? Yeah. I'll tell you what me and my team do. And, and, and I'm sure there's some other, other things out there that work great and some things that other people do, but those breaks are always going to be there. So if they're going to be there, adjust to them and learn from them and train with them. So the way my team has to be, and, and, and John's probably my hardest one at this, everybody else is pretty easy, but no matter how good or bad they shoot a stage, they get two minutes. They can high five, super five, super clap, run around. I'm awesome. Check me out. Look at my fancy pants. Or <laughs> if they're if they have a bad stage, they can pout and go to the next bay and and whine a little bit and kick and scream and tell me all about why it went wrong. But after two minutes, it's over and the stage is over. And and actually, the the shooting aspect of what we're working on right now is over. I want you to tune it off. Go to another gear. Let's tell a joke. Let's go tell a story. Let's go get our gear together. But the actual stage is gone. And and the last thing I want you to do is dwell upon it, no matter whether it was good or bad. And I also don't want you to start thinking about the next one. Because as soon as you go right from one to the next one, it's like, okay, I did this wrong here, so I got to not do this here. And I use this in my classes all the time. If, 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 if a waitress comes over and puts a hot plate in front of you and says, you know, excuse me, Dave, don't don't touch this. You know, it's really hot. As soon as she turns away, the first thing you're going to do is touch that. Oh plate. yeah, of course. You, you got it. You got to check it out. So, so you just got done with a bad stage. Like, okay, don't do that again. Don't go over there. Don't. You're done. You've already lost the whole match. Well, your brain doesn't hear the don't. It just yeah. hears you reinforcing that that item, right? So it's like. So what we do is yeah, don't drop so this. All you hear is drop fives this. or pout, and then it's over. And then until you're pretty much on deck, you know, we'll walk over the next stage. We're getting our gear together. You know when you're first. You know when you're second. You know you know when you're up. So you can kind of look at any section that that maybe has been troubling you or something that you want to do different. Make sure you got a good plan. And then until you're about two shooters out, you're still laughing and having fun. If you ever check us out, you're going to see John running around being a fool and Cody telling stories and 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 Tawny just doing Tawny things, standing off to the side and being quiet because that's the way Tawny is sometimes. Uh, but then when the when it's time, you know, when you're two out, now it's go time. It's a fist pump from the team. And, and now you get, get yourself back into that groove and start thinking about what you need to be thinking about. Put your mental concentration in where it needs to be and then go execute. So what we do, we just we just accept that that stuff's going to be there. I mean, I, I got a long, long I'll make it fast as I can. But my first year shooting superstition, same exact thing happened to me. I was having a great match. It was my first year. I was probably somewhere in the teens in TAC division. And, and Superstition is a huge match, so I'm having a great time. Shooter in front of me has a has a calibration call. It takes like 40 minutes for us to get this calibration done right with the, the match director and everything. And I run into this day, and I'm next. So then, then they just kind of hold me. Shotgun's already preloaded. I, I don't get to walk away. I'm just kind of standing there. And then I tank the stage, just totally mentally break down on the stage and just tank the stage. And so it became something right away then that I realized and I told my team like, hey, if that ever happens to you, you ask politely if you could put your gun down or you can unload it or you can start over and you go and you walk away because if you're always prepared to perform, you know, just two out or three out on deck in the hole and you're getting really good at that, when you have those breaks, it'll ruin you. So so work around it, learn, learn to deal with it because it's always going to be there. Don't don't let yourself get in the situation where you're stuck there. Walk away from it and then come back when the stage is ready or when when you're ready and start over. And and that's how we break our concentration from, you know, two minutes after a stage until you're on deck and you're two out. Got it. So so then it's it's more of like a talking to the the range officer or your squad mates or whatever and asking for that time of like, come on, let's let's do the five minute walkthrough. 
even though we've been sitting here watching everyone shoot it for the last 40 minutes or you know if you're if you're stuck in the shooter's box it's like hey can i unload and show clear and, and go gather my thoughts yeah, it's just gotta, communication yep you gotta start over and and again those things are always going to happen so the guy that the guy that finishes one stage and immediately starts thinking about his next stage and starts thinking okay and i'm second on the next stage so i got to do this and i got to do that and then i got to do this He's just built. It's just too over. There's too much going on in the mental scheme of the fact that you're going to be on the range for four to eight hours. You're going to only pull the trigger for a couple minutes. So you got to balance that brain, balance it out. Go have some fun with your squad mates. Go tell a joke. You know, you get done with the stage. It doesn't matter if there's a long line in front of you in the next stage because you're not getting mentally prepared for your stage until it's actually time. That's great advice, man. That's good. I like it. Well, so Pete, we've been uh, we've been chatting for quite a while here, and I don't want to take up your uh, entire Friday evening. So uh, I'm gonna sort of work to wrap up, but I, I really enjoy the way that you look at the game, and I want to know where do you see the sport of three gun headed? Well, man, it's it's growing. Obviously, it's there's so many matches now. There's there's good stuff going on all over the country. Um, you know, wait, 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 that's a political conversation. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it can always get more difficult to get parts or ammo, and that could always slow us down a little bit. But, you know, I think where do I see it going and where I wish it go? Where I wish it goes, man, I got this dream that that we get outside corporate sponsorship and we can start taking care of the top shooters the way the top shooters expect to be taken care of. These guys that are actually training and, and practicing and putting in the work, you know, they, they, they go to a match, you know, we should be able to – we should be able to give them a small paycheck and, and get that growing and 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 push forward with that. Get some telev television or some 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 bigger stuff going on so that the corporate sponsors and the bigger sponsors get on board. But also just all the way down to the entry level. The more three gun grows nationwide in these bigger events, the more people are probably going to get involved in their local club and maybe start up a local three gun club, maybe start up a three gun nation club or a USPSA club. And, and and get involved because they go, hey, you know, this is this is Pete Rensing and Tony Torres five years ago. We can't afford to travel. We can't afford to go to Ironman and, and go to all these matches we want to go to. So let's start a local club and then we can play all the time. And then a bunch of people started playing with us. And now we got matches every week. So, you know, my 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 dream would be that it just grows nationwide at the entry level with more ranges getting involved in a, in a new and exciting sport. And, and and not just bench rest shooting and things like that. You know, I no offense to it. I, I shoot my fair share of precision and and I love going to the sporting clays range, but you know, spread the love, get get some three gun clubs going all over the country, pistol clubs all over the country, and then, you know, who knows? Maybe 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 we can start being looked at in a in a light that's different than we're just carrying black rifles and and we got Glocks and pistols and kind of the unfortunate light that we get shed upon us at times that's very true so pete we've we've uh we've discussed like a, a lot of things here you put a lot of great thoughts into people's heads if you can leave the audience with just one thought or one piece of advice what would it be oh man i uh, i don't even have one piece of advice i talk too much <laughs> um you know just get out there and shoot and, and introduce more people to the sport that was that was the key for me you know I, i've got a couple of juniors uh you know, young you know 10 11 year old kids that i'm sponsoring i go I, I i'm honored to be invited to mgm junior camp and help teach them you know that's that's the future you you and i dave uh, sorry but there's plenty of us out there there's yeah. plenty of guys with guns that like guns that that may go out with their friends every once in a while and shoot guns and then see a comp and think i can do that and get involved but, uh, you know, newer shooters, juniors, ladies, get more people involved, get people out there. If you can lend a hand at your local club, if you've got the ability to, to lend a hand and, and help out, maybe build a stage or design a stage, you know, because if you're going to a major match and you have the ability to go to your local club and go to that match director and say, hey, you know, can we build a stage like this? Uh, I'm pretty sure I've never once told somebody no to helping me out you know, and, and volunteering and, and giving me a hand building something. And when you go, Hey, you know, next month we got to go here and, and this is what we're going to be doing. Any way we can do that. Yeah. Lend a hand. So, you know, new people, get more people involved. I, I pray the sport keeps growing, get more people involved, 
come out here to Vegas, shoot some cool matches. I got a bunch of stuff in the works, my, uh, other ideas that people are begging me to put together. Um, and just, just go out there and have fun, man. Go meet some cool people with like interests and have some fun. I like it, man. Well, when you get those, uh, those new ideas up and running, you let me know and I'll help you spread the word and, uh, we'll get people to fill those matches for you. I mean, you don't need my help, but I'd love to, uh, to, you know, tell the audience exactly what cool stuff you have going on. Pete, that's I got some good, some good stuff. I'll make sure I give you a buzz. Cause, uh, cause yeah, you can help me get it out there. I got some good stuff coming up. I love it. I love it. Pete, that's, that's a, Excellent final thought, man. We're looking forward to uh, to great matches from you in the future, and uh, I got to get out to one myself. So, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show here, man. And uh, thanks for sharing your your experiences. Hey, Dave, thanks for having me on. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Pete Renzing. I dug this interview myself. I really enjoyed Pete's positive attitude, uh, how he looks at everything, and it definitely shows that he has a genuine love of the sport and is willing to put in the hard work that it takes to compete at such a high level and uh, and to allow us to compete at a high level too. Again, selected links, including registration for these awesome matches, can be found on the website at 3 slash episode 71. And don't forget to sign up for the April giveaway of the MGM Target Switch View. Check it out at 3 slash MGM. And when you make a purchase at MGM Targets, you can save 10% using the code DHMGM10. You can also support the 3 Gun Show podcast by using our affiliate link when you shop at Brownells. Just go to 3GunShow.com slash Brownells and shop like normal. If you like this show, please tell a friend, subscribe in iTunes, and leave a review. If you're listening to this episode when it comes out, which is Wednesday, April 27th, 2016, you can catch me live tonight on The Shooter's Mindset. Uh, they host a weekly uh, YouTube slash Google Hangout uh, where they get together and talk about uh, generally practical shooting. So I will be on the show. So if you have any questions, go over and check it out. I'll put a link in the show notes at 3 slash episode 71 where you can link right to it. And if you catch us in the future, it will be available on their YouTube channel for replay. And I will have that link as well. Thank you so much for downloading, listening, and subscribing to the show. I'm Dave Hartman, and I'll catch you in the next episode. If you are finished, unload show clear.